Welcome back to IGTV. Uh, we're here today with security researcher uh, Robert O'Brien, and this is part two. Um, so, uh, Bob, let's get you back into view. And welcome back, Bob. Oh, good, good to be back. Oh, okay, great. So, you know, we were talking a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, how widespread uh, Stuxnet is. And that's uh, just for you folks out there uh, who may not be aware of it. That's S-T-U-X-N-E-T. I figured if I'm having a difficult time with it, other, others may be having a d difficult time with it as well out there. And Bob was going over uh, just a lot of different things about, you know, about the target, uh, you know, about all these machines that have been infected around the Internet and how, you know, where the machines are actually connected to the SCADA systems. It is a threat, but, you know, it's just like anything else. It could be a virus lurking uh, on your machine that really has no, no great impact, you know, unless you're connected to one of these industrial operating systems. Uh, and that would have to come from, uh, I guess, to have an impact, it would have to come from a Siemens operating uh, control system out there. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that, Bob. No, you're right, Jeff. Yeah. Okay, so why don't you get in a little bit? Uh, you, you had given me some information about uh, Symantec. All right, yeah. what, what Symantec had found out. So why don't you take off from there? Sure. Well, Symantec, you know, the computer security firm, uh, they found that 60% uh, of the infected machines were, in fact, in Iran. Uh, which is a target, but there was also 18% in Indonesia and 8% in India. Now, there's, there was also another note that said that China may have as much as a million machines infected. Now, China doesn't always uh, register their software, so I don't know how they came across that, but uh, it sounds like there's a lot of machines around the world that, that might have this lurking uh, Stuxnet. Uh, by the way, Stuxnet came from Somebody really dug deep into the uh, bowels of this virus, and they found the two words S-T-U-X and N-E-T. So they, they named it that way. I, I, I couldn't find out for the longest time how they named it. So, <laughs> a little, little bit of trivia. <laughs> yeah, well, I, listen, you know, this, this, this will go down as, uh, as one of those famous viruses. You know, I used to teach a computer malware course out at, uh, at a Farmingdale University, and, you know, we used to put up the, uh, the old chart, the timeline chart, of all yeah. the different viruses that would come out, well, Stucknets is going to make the chart. <laughs> of course it will. Yes, it will. Yes, definitely. definitely. Yeah, so that'll create even more grief for the students out there learning all about this. So, all right, so you've gone into some, you know, bits and pieces here about the background and things like that and how it may be, you know, not just hitting Iran but a lot of other people. And I certainly liked your analysis on the P-Stick part because it makes a lot of sense. All right, because you look for people who, with the motivation and the energy and perhaps the capital to, to create something like this, and that could be a piece that crowd, you know, it's almost sort of like, you know, the Greenpeace groups that are out there and stuff like that. All these groups have, you know, major league funders behind them, whether they're uh, Hollywood idols or, you know, other people out there with just millions of dollars and, you know, they're, they're pressed to make a point. <laughs> yeah, it is possible. Yeah. Uh, just to be uh, even about it, the other possibilities are, uh, it's not un it wouldn't be unseen to see a competitor to Siemens have put this out. That's pretty raunchy uh, uh, organization type stuff. So I think it's more either, I think it's more of a political type thing, but a well-funded, well-funded type thing. Well, yeah, this, would, this yeah. would have to be fairly well funded. I mean, either by a nation state or, or you know, what we would call probably com competitive intelligence or competitive espionage. Right. Um, or, or, like you say, an, another third driver here could be, you know, a fringe group out there. You know, uh, they're either against global warming or some other, some other wild thing that, that's out there. Oh, no. Oh, you know, no. and, yeah, and they are, they're, they're pretty sophisticated, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. whoever it is, they've... They've got a lot of intelligence and certainly a lot of work and capital behind them because this just didn't grow up in somebody's garage last week. This no is, way. This is very, nope. very, very, very sophisticated software. So what do we do about it? Yeah, well, uh, a couple of things. One of them is uh, to actually get rid of it. Like if you're, uh, uh, whoever's watching this, if you're uh, connected with some sort of uh, type of equipment where the semen stuff is looking at Go to the uh, Siemens reference, and they have a very specific way of removing this uh, this virus. Uh, and I have to caution whoever goes after this that basically it's going to lurk out in the 
in the operating system, in the control software operating system. So you're really going to have to replace uh, you probably some of your utility software after you've done all of the removal of this stuff. You've got to be very careful about this because otherwise it'll, it'll pop back up again. But in any event, uh, Siemens has a fairly detailed uh, procedure for how to remove it. And then uh, when you do that, then just make sure you go back and get a, a good clean copy of the, uh, the WinCC uh, control software and, uh, and check all of your, uh, what you would, uh, I would refer to as JCLs or proc lives. Make sure that they're clean too. Uh, so once you do that, then you should be able to be back up and running. Uh, but then from a, uh, a policy perspective, uh, you know, this is IG, this is IG TV. So it just so happens that Australia has come to our rescue. Just last week, they, uh, they came out with a, uh, a timely uh, Auditor General report on this topic. And uh, it's one of the references that, that's up on our, uh, our blog. And if you look at it, it's a terrific blueprint for how you go about developing a policy and a procedures for uh, preventing just such a thing as, as this type of, uh, of malware. Uh, it includes not only uh, software standards and things to look for, uh, antivirus checks to build in and stuff like that, but it also has procedural changes to put into your place. Uh, it, has, uh, it has a really, it, it, I, I tell you, they're very timely with this. Uh, like you said, Joe, I think at uh, one point, thank goodness for the internet. Uh, we can get something that hits us, then we can find a solution that's really a top-notch solution. So I would look for that. There's all kinds of references to the uh, IEEE standards and other government standards and other type of, uh, type of work. So if you're stuck with this thing and you have to come up with a quick solution, check out this uh, Auditor General in Victoria report. It's there. It's available on the internet, and it will give you a good heads up on uh, how to go for it. To, to get a good solution for yourselves. Well, you know, I, as as we would say to our uh, our friends uh, down south, uh, thanks to the Aussies, uh, we certainly appreciate their research, timely as it as it would be, and uh, you know, it's it's it certainly is well appreciated. And I think that's one of the benefits of the internet because as these things come about, uh, you have policy wonks and researchers from all over the world that are looking at these particular items and they're saying, okay let's put our heads together here just because we're not in the same room or even in the you know the same state <laughs> you know it doesn't matter anymore you know you could you could be on the four quarters of the planet and as long as you've got you know the wherewithal uh, to put all this together uh, we could really take advantage of it uh, I wanted to thank you number one uh, for for doing all this research for us and and certainly coming out with this uh, we'll be putting this up on our blog as well as posting it on IGTV um, for, for those people who want to research about it. Uh, did you have any closing comments or anything you wanted to add, Bob? Uh, no, just that it was a, a pleasure to uh, be able to add some, some value to the, uh, to the IGTV uh, network. And uh, just to uh, thank you, Joe, just a chance conversation that you said, hey, look, Bob, uh, take a look at the infrastructure. And then one thing happened after another, and uh, here we are. So uh, I got to thank my former employer for giving me the time off to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it, it does. It does work, and that's a, that's that's exactly. a good thing. All right, so uh, here we are with uh, with Robert O'Brien, uh, a uh, technology researcher here on IGTV, and, and Bob. We certainly do appreciate uh, you coming on and and certainly uh, bringing us uh, you know closer to. Uh, you know what our awareness level should be for this particular uh, outbreak of malware all right uh thank you and uh thank you folks for tuning in and we hope to see you soon on igtv bye now bye